Hello and welcome to Wake and Jake, myself and BBD, as we are two weeks away from playoff baseball, and this segment is called Clinched or Be Clenched. Um, not our first butthole segment in Wake and Jake history, but um, this September, which there's been a lot of buildup on the AL side, the AL West, which good team is not going to be making... The wild card. That still continues. The National League has sprinted till full disaster mode. Um, and I I wanted to zoom out because something... This whole weekend just didn't feel right. Uh, we were in a pretty strong stretch of good team faces bad team. Like every time we opened up the Talking Baseball document, it felt like six of the series... We're a team that was pretty much done for the year, lost. Team that was still competing, won. This weekend was quite the opposite. And I want to start out with some... (laughs) The teams that are still fighting. It's September. A September with your whole season on the line. Right? Like, for one of these NL teams, like, a... A playoff bid, it's something massive for your franchise. And going to the clinched, the Baltimore Orioles, three playoff series, or excuse me, three playoffs in 25 years. That's not a joke. They just clinched. It'll be their fourth, and it looks like it's the start of a pretty special run. And as we talked about on Talking Baseball today, they're one of the few teams that hasn't let us down at all this year. Their worst record was a 13-11 and 11 June, I believe. That it's just been an impressive run. Soup to nuts, farm to table, start to finish for the Baltimore Orioles, which we never like truly respected for half the season. Because of the Blue Jays hype train. Because of the big bad New York Yankees. Because of the Tampa Bay Rays having a perfect April and a well-run organization. Baltimore's run this year, um, I don't know. I, uh, I almost want to start hyping myself up for them to actually be the World Series team out of the American League. I don't know if I believe that yet. Um, I kind of want to see, I think in the AL, the bracket's going to matter. In the National League, it's kind of going to be the Braves and what does everything else look like. Although I am starting to drink a little Brewers Kool-Aid because their top three is impressive. Back to the B clenched. I brought up BBD's new favorite website. Do you know what website I'm talking about? I believe it's StatMuse. StatMuse. Love StatMuse. You get a cool picture. Get a cool picture. <laughs> kind of just like type stuff and then they give you the stat you were looking for. Best record in September. There's two teams tied with the same record. Any guesses? You've been watching some baseball. Watching some baseball. Rays just split, so it probably takes them. I I would guess the Rays would still be involved. They are not. They're they're on the a good side right now. Uh the two best records at eleven and five are the Miami Marlins who are clenched in a positive way. And the New York Yankees have the best record in September as of right now. (laughs) How fun is that? Let me continue down the list. At 10 and 5, in third and fourth place in September, the Detroit Tigers and the San Diego Padres, playing for nothing and 99.9% sure they're playing for nothing. Okay? Now, this next crew is important, and I like. The Baltimore Orioles clinched. The Tampa Bay Rays clinched. The Milwaukee Brewers and Minnesota Twins essentially clinched. All of those teams are either 10-6 and six or 10-7. and seven. Good job, guys. Um, the Blue Jays are the only team in that crew that's Concerned about making the playoffs. And with a big series sweep this weekend, 
you know, that turns a seven and six month into a ten and six month. Blue Jays, a team that future and past feels like it depends on these final two weeks. They set themselves up good this weekend. I think they don't have any tiebreaker. The final playoff teams or teams attempting to make the playoffs that are above 500 in this do or die September. My Arizona Diamondbacks, they're 10 and 7. They just swept the Chicago Cubs. And a team that feels like has just gone missing from the spotlight altogether, the Cincinnati Reds are 9 and 7. Okay, nothing special, but we're staying in the fight. We want to be about it. The teams with losing records in September. Again, a bit of a do or die month. The Houston Astros are 7 and 8 and they just lost series to Oakland and Kansas City. What the hell am I supposed to do with that? What? Like they could have just buried the division. They went 2 and 4 against the A's and Royals, two of the worst teams we've seen, I feel like, as a whole in the past few years. They dropped back-to-back series with them. They could have run away with the West. Like, it could be over. Could easily be three-and-a-half, four-game lead. It's not. The Chicago Cubs, 7-10. and ten. This team just put in so much work to get into this position that I just don't know. Um, To piss it all away at this point feels crazy. Phillies are 7-9, and but they still kind of don't care. Uh, But they have to be careful. They're a full slip-up away from being in the riffraff. I don't think they will. I think they're good enough, but they kind of don't care. The Texas Rangers are 7-9. and They seem like they're falling apart at the seams. They seem like they haven't been a good baseball team in a long time. They swept that Blue Jays series, and they had us all believing again. But that now feels like a blip on the radar. Also, under 500, the 6-10 and 10 San Francisco Giants and the Seattle Mariners. So the AL West, which the argument as of a week and a half ago was almost a chesty, hey, remember how good the AL East was supposed to be this year? Look at the AL West. Rangers, Mariners, and Astros, who are all going to figure it out, and they're going to play each other, and someone will save their September. Probably Houston. They're all about to play each other. The Mariners have the A's, and then they play these guys, so that should improve their record a little bit. It just feels like, and what should be inspiration time, like you should be winning us over. Like, wow, this team's getting hot before the playoffs. Watch out. Like, that's sports. That's baseball. All of these teams have been awfully uninspiring. And to say, like, if you think you have a lean on any of these teams, I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I'm still excited to see how the West winds down. Uh... But I'll be honest. Atlanta and the Dodgers, you're not going to talk anyone out of. They're clinched. Atlanta had a fun time in Miami, off the field. The Dodgers, they clinch again. Awesome picture of Kershaw in the locker room. He's back, by the way. The Dodgers are going to be there. The American League with Baltimore and Houston currently as the one two doesn't feel as strong. I think I'm buying I think I'm just in on the Orioles. I want to see how the playoff bracket looks. One of the teams I just mentioned. For these next two weeks, could go 
you know, 12 and 2. Offense is clicking. P- pitching looks good. Sure. Buy it. I'm in. I'm just in on the Orioles. They have, they haven't had a bad month. They're technically three games up on the Rays because they have the tiebreaker. I don't see them letting up now. Grayson Rodriguez, since he has been called back up, back up, has been one of the best pitchers in baseball. They've been without Felix Bautista, who I think is throwing with a partially torn UCL, which I don't know. I know you. I know when it's partial, you can you can rehab. I've never seen it rehab that quick, but interested. I guess let me know if this is stupid sports logic. If Bautista tears his UCL and he has to get Tommy John, which I guess they've already said they don't have to, but. Like I, like I think if he like just rehabbed, like ends this season, but he could rehab and be fine by next year. At least in the past, when I've seen it rehab, right? I don't know. Yeah, I was I was just about to give a speech about like it moves quick. If he's gonna tear it or if he needs surgery, anyways, like do you let him go eat in this postseason? Because who knows if you'll have an opportunity to like be the one seed again? I think you have to be worried about the player's health a little more than that. <laughs> So, yeah, just tell him to go out there and finish the tear. Yeah, just it, let's find out how far we can go, huh? Um, yeah, I don't think Felix is thinking that way. <laughs> the Orioles are fun. They do still have the energy of a team that can lose four games to one and feel like their season got punched in the mouth. I don't want to believe in that, and they've given us no reason to believe in that. So, uh, kind of one final congrats to the Baltimore Orioles on an amazing season. I think their Vegas over-under this year was 78. Double check. Beebs can Beebs will assure us of that. Um, more or less projected to finish... Seven, 76 and a half was... Uh... That's the line Vegas. We picked on. That's real money. That's real money. They're going to sneak up on 100 wins. There's so much to like about this organization from the front office rebuild to all the young talent to them sticking with Brandon Hyde through the tough years. There's a there's a pretty solid chance I'm going to be rooting Orioles in October, which I didn't know if I'd ever say that sentence. So, uh congrats to the Birds. Clenched teams, come on. Someone do this right. Someone run the table for the next two weeks so I can believe in you. The other fun thing that's going on in the National League here, well, all the home, well, no, outside of the AL West, because we'll see what goes on there. The home teams in the National League are going to be Phillies, Brewers, in the wild card. Who would you rather face, BBD? Man. It's Phillies, but it's not. Neither sound great. Like, the Brewers, just the the three starters that they can put out there in a wild card series, you, you can walk away having scored zero runs, and that's kind of their formula. The Phillies, they have quality starting pitching too, but not ones that you just go in like kind of dreading. Is that fair? But yeah. their lineup is ridiculous. Like everybody hits. Considering last year and everything all in, I thought there'd be a slightly better Brewers argument. You don't want to go into Philly and see that lineup and they still have pitchers. Like that's still... That still holds. Yeah. They they pitch enough in the lineup top to bottom is better. And I guess we'll see if the NL, if any of these teams position themselves right to even have the opportunity. But right now, Philly's the four seed, Milwaukee's the three. Um, I think all of these teams are just hunting so wins that you're not going to see anyone navigating for teams to play. 
The AL still could get full wonk. Astros could fall out of that two seed pretty easily. I think the Orioles are good. I think they're in. I think they're the one. I think that's game over. Which means Tampa's basically a lock to be four. The Twins are a lock to be three. And I know I just complimented complimented the Twins on today's Talking Baseball. I know they've been pitching really well. But, I mean, if your options are going to Minnesota and play the Twins or go to Tampa and play the Rays... That Twins playoff losing streak is alive till it isn't. It's no contest. It's no contest. Um, And that's kind of the same situation. The Twins will be the three. And it's it's just going to be so interesting to see what team is sitting there at the six. Right now it's the Texas Rangers who think about how high we've been on them all year. Like... If them or the Astros or Seattle look good going into the playoffs... Imagine if they get Houston. Imagine if the Twins get Houston. God, the most like the most playoff success you can have in basically a six year span outside of the nineties Yanks. Um compared to the team that can't win in the playoffs recently. Um I don't know. I wish uh I want a team to win me over. Baltimore, you've done it this whole year. Congratulations. Uh, We're going to talk some football, but a little teaser. It may be a foolish Bailey week. (laughs) It may be a foolish Bailey week. Um, And I would go bet on that at the DraftKings Sportsbook because, sure, you can bet on the football. But, man, you can also bet on the baseball, too, because playoffs are on its way. And with DraftKings... You won't miss a moment of the baseball action. $200 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on baseball. What are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code BAKERS. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on baseball. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code BAKERS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit www.1800gambler.net in New York. Call 8778-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of the Boot Hill Casino Resort in Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, Ooh. LA. 21 plus ages vary by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. C dkng.co slash baseball for eligibility terms and responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Thank you. Cold nugget Lake Charles. Yeah. Have not been there. Would like to. Let's, uh, let's head into the NFL weekend. Uh, give you the, a couple highlights, a couple of the lowlights. Uh, and going cron pod just to figure it out. A couple ball games tonight: uh, Saints, Panthers, Browns, Stillers. Thursday night was a half fun one. We had Eagles, Vikings. Uh, these teams played last year. Uh, Eagles put it on them a little bit, and Vikings kind of look lost. Uh, Jalen Hurts runs for a couple. Um, DeAndre Swift is kind of the story from this game. 28 carries for 175. For the past couple years, we've kind of gotten lost in that Eagles running back committee. Uh, They got Swift, who was kind of the Lions guys. Jamal Williams TD hawked him a little bit. Uh, But they give him the pill a lot. Jefferson does his thing. Kirk Cousins racks up four touchdowns in 364. And they were never really in play. Um, But... A fun Thursday night game. Vikings 0-2. Vikings 0-2. Eagles 2-0. And that's obvious. Which brings us to the Sunday slate. And how about the team you guys know I'm a sucker for for kind of no reason? The Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons improved to 2-0. They have a late comeback. 13 points in the fourth quarter to come back against the Green Bay Packers uh, and keeps kind of the Jordan Love hype train from leaving the, the station. 
They beat the Panthers and Packers at home. They're going to play at the Lions next week. Uh, I think I might be on Lions big there, depending what the spread is. I saw our guy Bobby Skinner tweet out that Bijan Robinson is the best running back in football. Um, whoa. Here's what I'll tell you about Bobby. Bobby's not tweeting that for likes. Bobby's not tweeting that for engagement. Bobby believes in that. Um, and I don't know. I mean, with, with all the talk around running backs and how it's younger and guys don't get paid, I think I'll believe Bobby. Um, he had that nice receiving catch week one where he moved like a wide receiver. Falcons believe in what they do, and the only thing I'll add to it is their season goes, and let's see, at Lions, Jaguars, Texans, Commanders, you get a couple wins there. Arthur Smith, who's running the Falcons, he was the Titans coordinator, offensive coordinator, when they started. Their offense was kind of scary. Like, it was a lot of Derrick Henry, but it was also like Tannehill kind of had big days sometimes. They, they did enough outside of that to be pretty truly dynamic. Yeah, they, I mean, you know, those teams had some big wins, and Rabel gets a lot of the credit because head coach and the leader, but the offensive coordinator that set up Derrick Henry for all those running games when you knew he'd be the featured back, that set up Tannehill to be somewhat successful, and he was. Uh, and now, you know, there's been, I know after week one, some people were like, who is this guy? Um, good on the Falcons. Packers, they go, they host the Saints next week. So let's see where the Saints are at. Um, I think Green Bay will still be the favorite in that game. But man, Jordan loved Derek Carr. Buckle up. Bills blow out the Raiders, and that's obvious. Uh, get right game for the Bills at home after that crazy game to the Jets where they lose Rodgers and the punt and all of that. Uh, Raiders are not a good football team. They get shut out in the second half. Bills um, end up rolling it up, 38 yards. Josh Allen taking more crazy hits. I'm out on it. I'm just so far out on it. I can't believe he's still in on it. Um and again, another shout out to my guy Bobby Skinner on football today. He said the same thing. He echoed me like verbatim. I mean, it's crazy. Like no player in the NFL can take those hits. Um, Bills roll. They're back. Um, I do have one semi hot take on the Bills, but it's more related to another team coming up. AFC Norris football, Ravens, Bengals. And the Ravens improve to 2-0. and oh, They win against the Bengals. Lamar Jackson feels like he has more help than he does in the past year. Uh, the funny thing going on with the Bengals, I think Joe Burrow has some... I think he's 1-7 in seven in weeks 1-2. and two. Uh, It's something bizarre like that. But the Bengals did this whole thing last year. They've got a nice little stretch of schedule coming up. Rams against Cardinals Seahawks. That... Feels like there's three wins in there that we'll either be talking about the four and two bangles or the three and three bangles. Kind of weird that they did this last year and they did this this year and they openly, they openly like didn't approach um, preseason football last year. Good for the Ravens. The, uh, the coaches were all banging into each other pretty good on the sideline. They were stoked for this one. They've got, Colts coming up, and then at Browns, at Steelers. Not as uh, any road game in the NFL in the Norris, uh, but you're probably looking at a 3-0 Ravens team. Lamar Jackson got the new contract. He's got actual skill positions. It's a coaching staff you believe in. Go Ravens, go. Seahawks and the Lions basically played the Madden game that everyone expected. Uh, 37-31 in OT. Uh... I almost said Golden Tate. It's been a couple years since Golden Tate was doing it. Although this is the Golden Tate Bowl, right? Lions, Seahawks. Those are those are the two main ones. He show up in the Giants at the end. Did I dream that? He did. Good for he him. Did. It was a it was a weird tenure. Uh, Tyler Lockett, uh, a little, little slimmer Golden Tate. Um, he gets the game winning touchdown in OT. Couple of curious Dan Campbell decisions here. Um, Couple going for it on fourth downs that didn't convert, which, okay. I mean, that 
you know, that's the game. That's aggressive and kind of the lane he coaches in, and that's fine. They had the ball, uh, 50-yard line, three timeouts with a little bit left, and they basically played for the field goal, which people were kind of doing, uh, oh, that doesn't, doesn't feel very Lions. Doesn't feel very Lions. They end up losing at home in OT to the Seahawks. Both teams are at 1-1. One and one. I don't know if this game makes you feel different about either team. Seahawks at home versus the Panthers next week. So a chance to, a pretty good chance for them to get back to a winning record. Uh, Lions, like I said, they're hosting the Falcons. And I wouldn't be surprised if, they're, uh, if they come out for blood. But B. John Robinson may also run for 200 yards on them. <sighs> Chargers. It's the same thing every year. It's the same thing every year. They lose to the Titans in overtime. 27-24, Nick Folk with the game winner. Herbert, 305, two touchdowns. Keenan Allen, 8 for 111, two touchdowns. And the Titans win at home. Um, I don't know, man. Like, there's... My guy Rosillo is pretty firm on... Whenever you hear someone say, like, this team knows how to win, it's kind of bullshit. Like, some years you win games. Maybe last year's Giants. Maybe last year's Vikings. And then there's normally a leveling out. I don't know. Uh, I guess Tannehill and the Titans get it done at home. If you're the Chargers, you're sitting at 0-2. And I don't know, man. If I... Well... I'm a fan of another AFC West team that has kind of burnt me out. You're a Chargers fan. I, I just don't know what to think anymore. Um, they lose close ones to the Dolphins and the Titans. Man, the Chargers and Vikings in Minnesota next week. One of those teams will be 0-3, which in the NFL, the statistics just don't... Not a lot of teams get out of those holes. Um God, I don't, uh, not a call for people's jobs guy, but Staley, the Chargers head coach, I don't know. Doesn't feel like he's been the answer there. He feels like the bad version of Mike McDaniels. Like his kind of cousin that goes to parties you're not supposed to go to. I don't know. I don't know. Just doesn't uh just doesn't feel right. What does feel right? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are 2 and 0. Baker Mayfield. They take down the Vikings, they take down the Bears. They host the Eagles next week, primetime. I don't think anyone's buying the Bucks as much as they're fading the Vikings and the Bears. Justin Fields in what has kind of felt like a do-or-die year for Justin Fields. 16 for 29, 211, one touchdown, two ints, six sacks. Remember I read last year's sack number and that really jumped off the page? I don't know, man. 55 sacks last year. He's got 10 this year in two games. There was a highlight going around where there was, you know, a couple open receivers and he just basically runs into his own own line. There's some scary stuff there, man. And it's it's why people were skeptical. It's why I'm still skeptical. Um, and you you wonder what's spinning through his head right now. Is he saying I need to sit in and make more passes and get better? At what point do you snap and say my my gift is my legs and I, I got to go get this like on my own? I don't know. But the Bears are 0-2. Bears fans are losing, losing a lot of faith kind of with every pass. Um, and, hey, here's one that snuck on everyone's fantasy radar. Rashad White. Rashad spelled with a C-H. He's getting points. I don't know. Good for you but if you drafted numbers. him. He was kind of a guy I looked at in each draft, and I was like, I'm probably good on Rashad White. Could have been wrong. Is Mike Evans still 
balling out. Six for Monster. 171. The Monster. Hall of Famer. Oh, yeah. Texas A&M. Johnny Manziel. Two all-pro tackles, I believe, too. <laughs> the game that was billed the game of the weekend, Chiefs-Jaguars. Slightly lackluster. 17-9. to nine. Uh, Kelsey's back. He gets the touchdown pass, punches it in, punts it into the stands. A couple Taylor Swift jokes. Um, blank space, I believe that was uh, Ian Eagle, or it's his son. Uh, I, di- I didn't catch who made the call, but, uh, but yes, there was a blank space joke. Yeah. Um, I did see Ian Eagle's son is joining the Yes team, so. Yeah, calling some Nets games. Nets stuff. Ho, Chiefs some Bears. Some of People are still, like, kind of worried about the Chiefs. I might go bet them to win the division right now because their next schedule of games, Bears, Jets, Vikings, Broncos, Chargers, Broncos. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're winning at least four, if not five or six. They're the Chiefs. They have Mahomes. They have the coach. Uh... Jaguars spinning into a good thing. Spinning into a good thing. Like the team you know that's going to beat there, be there kind of came in, kind of gave you the business a little bit, and their schedule doesn't look too daunting either. So hopefully uh, Dougie P can use it to, to teach the kids a little bit. The Chiefs exist. Colts, Texans, uh, no thank you, really. Uh, although, C.J. Shroud ends up with 384 through the air. It's pretty good for Rook. Again, like, going back to Justin Fields, we haven't seen him do anything like that. Anything. Um, and the highlight before he had to leave due to injury, uh, Anthony Richardson, yo. Um, I had one of my friends text me, uh, I'll keep them anonymous this morning. Uh, he is a Justin Fields detractor or not a fan. And he said part of the reason he's not a Justin Fields fan is because he's seen Anthony Richardson do anything he can do in his first two games. And he's kind of not wrong. He's kind of not wrong. Uh, Richardson, before he left, three carries for 35 yards, two touchdowns. They called him from very similar areas on the field, and he just made plays. Um, again, like I said with Field, you're going to have to see more passing, but these are still his first two games. Um, but, man, he looks, he looks like he has all of the talent in the world. And I don't know, if you're a Texas, Texans fan, I guess you're not bummed out what you see from Stroud, but that team is still pretty dearth of talent. Is that the right word? There, yeah, there there is a dearth of talent there. Dearth of talent. Yeah, I mean Richardson, the what you would ask for in a modern quarterback. He's kind of the prototype. He's gonna he's gonna have to develop the passing more, but man, he is a problem on the, the ground. The arm abilities are there. Nico Collins with a huge day for the Texans. Go pick him up. Why not? Uh, both these teams are gonna end up being bad. So, especially, especially if Richardson's out. Yes. Hello, Minshew. Minshew Hive raise up. This brings us to the afternoon slate where the New York football giants lost everyone. You know, I think at one point on the year they were down 60 to nothing. 40 to nothing loss week one, down 20 to nothing at halftime. And the boys put it together. I I don't know what it means for the season. Uh, I know Daniel Jones, statistically what he did, there's a couple tweets going around that like hasn't been matched. It was like 250 yards passing. It was 50 yards rushing. Um, you know, it was butter knifed a little bit, but... Good on the Giants for rallying, man. It's a big, it's a big comeback. It's on the road. I know it's a bad team. I know it's still not impressive. I think the Niners are gonna absolutely steamroll them, especially without Saquon. But 
it did feel like if they lost this game, almost any of the goodwill Dayball built up last year was out. Was out. So they'll have this. And again, it's going to be a giant year, man. Like, they're going to have to really win home versus the Seahawks. They're going to have to win a Commanders-Jets games. They're going to have to win Raiders. But just getting this win means they'll hang around. Yeah. Which is they, still Giants fans. We were, we were very close to after week two, Giants season is just over. I mean, at halftime. And it is not. Uh, you can still, the rest of the way you win the games you, you should and you steal one or two playoffs, you know, you can still believe in, um, but, God. but yeah, we, a disaster avoided, see where it shakes out over the next two weeks when that Seahawks game. Happy for the talking giants guys. Go check them out. Um, Good up this morning. Niners Rams. I kind of told you guys I was interested in this one. The Rams with a little bit of juice. Puka Nakua. Bro of the night. TBT. 15 catches for 147. Fifth round pick has broken the record for most catches by a rookie in their first two games. Fifth round pick. Uh, Ends up not fully mattering. Uh, Niners. This game was a little back and forth at first. Niners get ahead. They have like a 10-point lead. And uh, important to some, if you use the DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, Rams kick a field goal as time expired that did conveniently make it a seven-point game. The Niners were seven-and-a-half-point favorites. So, I don't know. I don't know what you do with that. Uh, McCaffrey scored on the opening drive, 20 for 116 and a touchdown. Picked him, as did Chris Rose. He knows ball uh, in our weekly pick someone to score a touchdown. Two for two. Seems kind of easy. Should start betting it. Um, Niners roll. They're playing the Thursday night game against the Giants. I think they're going to embarrass them at the party. And if you're the Rams... We're building on something here. Stafford with 300 yards passing. He has two picks. Um, they are playing at the Bengals, and the Bengals really need. I don't don't lo- need a win. Don't love that for them. Uh, but I think the Rams have shown they're gonna they're gonna be around this football season, which I not a lot of people not a lot of people factored this in. Hey, shout shout out Maddie Staff. Kind of him and just a bunch of guys right now that we that weren't on the radar. Puka Nakua. Three weeks ago. What's that about? Uh, McVay, Matthew Stafford. We can work with that. We can work with that. Uh, let me check off two things before I get to the two teams I really want to talk about. Um, oh, actually, it's like one thing. Um, the Denver Broncos have almost lost me. I say this as a pretty big sports fan. I say this as the kid that wore Terrell Davis's jersey every year in middle school. They're 0-2. They lost to the Commanders at home after losing to the Raiders at home. You lost two home games to two teams that were not projected to make the playoffs. The Chargers are 0-2. Hell, Kansas City's 1-1. They lost by one point to the Raiders. They end up losing by two points to the Commanders, and they even gave themselves an extra little bit of hope with a Hail Mary at the end. Nice little tip drill. Snags it at the top. Uh, Two-point conversion. Unsuccessful. They lose 35-33. to uh, I don't know. I don't know. The You heard it in my voice when I talked about the Sean Payton onside kick to start his regime. I thought that was so soft. That was like chicken shit. Against the Raiders? What? Um, And then to blow a lead against the Commanders. Hey, maybe the Howell Hive is right. Maybe he's next. Uh, I think Terry McLaurin is awesome. I think even there, Brian Robinson. 
who's gotten kind of one up by B. John Robinson. Uh, the 2 0 Washington Commanders. Go have a day. They host the Bills. That could actually be a little bit of a fun game because what I wanted to talk about the two teams I am way in on, a lot more in on than I was to start the season. The Dallas Cowboys, who they end up routing the Jets, you know, this was Wilson's first game. I think we're going to look back and say it's a really tough first game because the Cowboys' defense, Micah Parsons, he's already Defensive Player of the Year. It's like over. What he does on defense is just different. Nobody else does it. Um, they end up winning 30-10 to 10 against the Jets. It's in Dallas. C.D. Lamb goes 11 for 143. Tony Pollard, he doesn't, 25 carries, not, not the yardage you might expect with that kind of workload, 72 yards. Dak, 255, two touchdowns, clean, no interceptions. Um, the Dallas Cowboys actually got dinged before this season for being the Dallas Cowboys. Their defense is gross. Gross. It's one of the best in football as long as Parsons isn't around. And that's ignoring, like, Stephon Gilmore's on that team. Like, that's, mm. that's a primetime player. Uh, Van Der Esch, whenever he's out there, he makes plays. Demarcus Lawrence, Fowler Jr., like, Diggs uh, is going to get interceptions. Uh, like, the Cowboys' defense is for real. It's going to be one of the best in football as long as – you could say this with anything in football as long as they stay healthy – and the offense is there. Like, Dak is Dak. You want to be high or low on him, whatever. He goes 31 of 38 against the Jets defense that is regarded as one of the best in football. They were on the field a lot here and did not get a lot of help from their offense. So, you know, there's always some caveats. But 31 of 38, two touchdowns, no picks. Tony Pollard, everyone that disliked what the Cowboys were doing last year said they were giving Zeke the ball too much. Tony Pollard's going to get the ball. And CeeDee Lamb is just a dude. He's a dude, dude. 11 catches, 143. Cowboys are one of the best teams in football. I was tough on uh, Pennick and Dalton. They had them as, I think, a top five or six team. And I kind of did a, eh, like, let's... I don't know about that, Jim. They're there. They're really good. The other team that is there, and I think I'm going to go pick them to win the division, the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Sunday night football. The Patriots, bless their heart, kind of make it a game. The field goal block was sick. And you wonder if Bill or the special teams coach, however they had that up their sleeve, that was sick. That changed the momentum and made it more of a game. Uh, Patriots defense getting involved, and uh, maybe they drew up a little bit of a formula to play Miami. The broadcast was all over it. They were doing three safeties and just not getting beat deep, making Miami dink and dime the, dink and dime the Patriots to death. I mean, Raheem Moster can fly and fits in perfectly with that offense. Waddle and Hill, you already know. Um, even Ahmed, the backup running back, didn't do much, but he kind of won me over. I like the way he plays. I like the way you tether ball, sir. Um, I think the Miami Dolphins have an offensive advantage at head coach. I think they have an offensive advantage with a lot of their skill players. I think Tua is one of the most accurate quarterbacks. Um his over-the-shoulder pass that kind of ensured the win. Uh, not a lot of guys make that throw. He dropped it right in the bucket. It's a beauty, and he's that's like almost his signature throw. He looks just like Dan Marino. Crazy. Crazy broadcast crew. What are we doing? How do we get Dan Marino into this broadcast? I don't know. Flip him. <laughs> I do. Oh, crazy. They're... There was some usefulness to that back during Tua's draft. Mm. Uh, 
Because remember, the, there was like a narrative about it, and they're like, yeah, it looks weird. There hasn't been like a successful lefty in a while. Yeah. And everyone, and then you know, they put out a few flipped images. He's like, oh, it looks normal. Not comparing to Dan Marino, which, yeah, all right, fine, it looks similar, okay. But it's like, oh, oh, he throws just like right. He's just, it's the other side. It was a right. thousand percent someone in a Dolphins uniform throwing a football. Both picks. Thousand percent. Mm-hmm. Um, also kind of fun, two and Mac Jones, Bama, oh, roll yeah. tide. There's some fun stuff there. Um, Mac Jones ain't it. It's just a fact. Um, the Patriots, I think I said dearth of talent before. I don't know, man. It, it kind of felt like they pulled out a lot of the stops to stay in this game. <sighs> I'll pump the brakes. I actually wanted to walk out of that game being like, I don't know, Belichick still has it. I was going to compare him to Popovich. Um, they played the Eagles and Dolphins kind of closer than you'd think. That's me being high on the Dolphins. Now, those both games were at home. Both games were in control by the other team. Like, if the Patriots somehow won it, it would have been like, oh, my God. Can you believe it? Um, it ends up not being the case. I will still won't r- rule out Bill. But... I will kind of rule out the the Patriots, man. Their their talent does nothing for me. They are at the Jets, which, God, that'll be ugly. That will be hideous. And then they're at the Cowboys, which the spread on that game in a couple weeks, I think it could be like 13 and a half. Whew. I don't know. Like, that's how high I am on the Cowboys. That's how low I am on the Patriots. Um <laughs> And yeah, as long as two is out there, which is the big question mark, and I do think he'll get banged up at some point, but it's just how banged up. I think the Dolphins are better than the Bills. I do. Um, I like their coach better. I think Tua can throw with Josh Allen on any given day. And I kind of like their skill guys better. So I'm uh I'm drinking the Dolphins Kool-Aid. A lot of bit, apparently. They're about to host my Broncos. Hmm. So I think you know where I stand on that. Uh, And I guess we'll find out because after that, they play the Bills in Buffalo, uh, which I think that'll be a great game. But uh, yeah, I I think the Dolphins are a class team, and I did not believe that coming into the season. Um, Them and the Cowboys. I'm kind of all in on both of them. Dolphins. Dolphins finish, and I know we're so far away from this. Dolphins finish Cowboys, Ravens, Bills. That could be fun. Be a good tune up. Might end up with them or or the or the Cowboys next week in the against the spread league, which you are two and zero in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I won it last year. Uh, I wanted to look up my final record. It was like eleven and six or twelve, twelve and five. I don't know, um, but yeah, I'm two and zero this year, so I could definitely put out a graphic that. Is a little ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, I took the Ravens just because either team could have won that game. Mm-hmm. Plus three and a half, which like if the Bengals did win, you could see it being by one, two, or three. And yeah, so I, I don't know. There wasn't a ton of logic that went into it. It's just the Bengals are bad the first two weeks of the season. But yeah, yeah. I am 2-0 and against the spread uh, that we were doing with DraftKings, and we put out the graphic every Thursday before the Thursday game so guys can get that in. Um, Updating the people on the rest of the standings there. Bobby is 2-0 and with you. Yep. He had, he had the Dolphins covering 2.5. They did. Justin and Trev uh, fall to 1-1. One and one. Pennock had the Chargers covering three points. They, they uh, lose the game. Trev had the the Lions covering. They lose the game. It's tough. Covering five and a half. That's a pretty decent size. And Kenobio got a got a little little screwed by the push there. Push. Oh one and one, which I, I don't think has come up in the ATS league before. The uh, the old push. I think we had one push last year, but yeah, push It ain't a win. There's times when a push feels like a loss. Um so still got a zero in that win column. A fun NFL weekend. 
in on the Finns and the Cowboys. Do I need to be out on something? Does that does that help me tie off the loose end? I guess the Chargers, just because I don't believe in their coach. It's kind of kind of started out on them. Still in on the own two Bengals, if that matters to anyone. Um, so let's enjoy a double dip tonight of football, seven fifteen and eight fifteen kickoff. So they oh, have yeah, it tiered. They have it tiered, um, which I kind of like. Allows me to get my sleep in. Hey, enjoy your guys' week. Like I teased, I think we're getting a little folkish baseball. I like that. Uh, on Wednesday's up, and uh, I love you guys. So goodbye.